Greetings, so Jaya has dropped, it's the Angels of Zaraman update today and instead of doing the new stuff I bought the Warframe and was trying her out and seeing all the builds and stuff and after putting 5 former in I have a few things to say about Jaya, she's quite interesting, I'll go through her abilities, I'll go through my build and explain my reasoning. Um, she looks alright, she's not my cup of tea really uh, in terms of looks, that's quite a lot what about what this game is so yeah looking wise not great but uh maybe it's just my fashion sense i don't know she is very interesting she is very squidgy for a warframe um and i think is a very interesting thing for de to do because recent warframes have been sort of um good at most things uh they're quite reasonably tanky they reasonably do decent damage you know, they, they do a bit of everything and they're, they're quite interesting in that sense. Whereas Jaya is all output, control, CC and damage. And I think it's very interesting. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think it promotes good team play. Um, I think Jaya would wombo with really well with other Warframes that could protect her properly. Um, I think that's a really good thing in this game. I think when you release all these warframes and they're all just solo in t solo incentive sort of just uh whatever i have 95 percent damage reduction on this ability that ability you know i can do this and do that i think being the designated damage dealer is interesting i think it's a cool thing her abilities are quite cool um i've tried a few builds out as i said um i will go through the abilities and what she does and all the interesting mechanics that came with her looking at her abilities her passive Jai's abilities have 10% chance to deal critical damage for each electrical status that affects the enemy. So, it's pretty cool. Um, keyword there is abilities and not not output damage for you. Uh, it's just it's just all to do with her abilities, which we'll get onto in a sec. Uh, it's just important to note that because I misread that the first time and assumed that was damage. Arcsphere, her first ability, her Q, launch a gyratory sphere that will deal high damage on impact and periodically deal electrical shocks to nearby enemies, hit multiple enemies at once with the initial launch to enhance the damage. And it looks like this. So you do the initial blast and then it's dot damage over time. Um, and as you can see, because it's electricity, it's proccing the status and occasionally they get stunned. Not all the time though. If you put two in there, maybe three, uh, you can have max three. Uh, your chances to inflict the electricity proc will proc a bit more often. But again, not always. You can see some of them aren't quite getting stunned and then they'll break out of it and then that's when they can shoot you and then that's when you die. So it's uh, just one thing to note. Next ability. Coil Horizon, throw forward a gyratory sphere that will implode after a few seconds and can be manually triggered. Very interesting ability, it's actually quite a cool one. Initially I thought it was a bit garbage, but I realised it's actually quite cool. So you can you can throw it, I'll stand back a bit because it goes quite far, it has a little timer. And after the timer ends, they all get sucked into it like a Valban. Uh, sun. It doesn't st stick around though, it's just pretty quick, it does some damage on its own. However... You can cast that quickly, which is why which is why I have retracted my previous opinion. You can throw it and then cast it quickly. And yeah, it's quite a good, it's quite a cool ability actually. I think it's quite interesting. Um, and obviously that stacks up with the Q, uh, the number one, sorry. It does initial blast damage and based on the enemies that you catch in that initial blast, it does more damage. So that's, that's the cool wombo from ability one and two. Ability 3, Cathode Grace. Gain a brief burst of increased critical chance and energy regen with each kill extending duration of Cathode Grace. Casting is on cooldown. So, cool Billy. Um, it's really not that hard to juggle. It can go to a max 60 seconds. Um, I'll switch to a fast killing weapon. So when you cast it, you gain crit chance and energy regen. So I cast it. I get 12 seconds on the dot. I kill one enemy. I get 14. Kill another enemy. 16. And these are level 180, by the way. So, you know, like, they're quite tough. Like, high time to kill. 33 seconds. So it's easy It's easy to juggle. Obviously, in a normal game, there will be enemies all around you constantly. You'll have that constantly around, like, 50, 60 seconds. There's rarely ever time where you, you have downtime for more than 40 seconds before another enemy's on you. So that's what Cafo Grace does. And her ultimate, Rotor Swell. 
Gyre's mechanism spin at incredible speeds, generating an electric field that shocks nearby enemies. When Gyre gets a critical hit, a large electrical discharge will chain from that enemy that was hit to nearby enemies. It's a core cool ability. It does two things primarily. When you cast it, let me spawn the enemies. Once you cast it, nothing happens until you, st you get one of them inside this ring around you. You've got a nice long radius. You stand one in there. And every now and again, if it crits on him, which we'll have a chance soon, hopefully. There you go. When it crits, as you can see, that crit then jumps to other enemies around. So even though I've got one or two of them in there, Every time it crits, it will jump to the rest of them outside. That also works with your weapons. So if I stand back and let the let this die down quickly. If I stand over here and I shoot the Kuvanukal, which has no innate electricity. Because I'm crit because I'm doing a critical hit, it's proccing electricity, which in turn is proccing uh, the ability that it, it, it will make the the jump, the damage jump. Which is pretty cool. Which means you don't have to have them inside this small ring. Obviously, it's quite a close ring. If you're fighting Granera Corpus, they're going to be standing 50 meters away. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you stand all of them in there, obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get them all in there. It's going to be pretty cool. If you stand away, it doesn't matter. You can still shoot them. You still proc the Electricity, which in turn then procs the crit, which in turn procs the jump between enemies. So it gives you sort of like a handheld ability Amprex. So they're her abilities. Cool things to note is that they wombo together. So Cathode Grace, obviously I showed you the Coil Horizon Ball into the Arc Sphere when you hit multiple enemies at once, does loads of damage, which in turn creates electricity, which in turn creates critical damage, which then in turn makes this jump to nearby, nearby enemies. So you can see at the bottom of their discharge range, 17 meters, which I haven't modded to, uh, which is pretty good. So once you once you're utilizing all of the kit, they all sort of synergize really, really well. And I really, really like that um, about her. I think that's a really interesting thing. Um, because it's electrical damage, uh, elect uh, the electrical passive, when you use innate electricity on weapons like the Amprex, you can amplify that kind of damage and, and get red crits off her abilities, which I think is very interesting. You can get up to like 50, 60 electricity procs at once. And this is the Amprex build I'm using. It has Viral on it because Viral still uh, will affect the electricity. The way the electricity status works is it will do 50% of your weapons damage as a proc. And obviously you can stack that up again and again and again. And then Viral amplifies that. And obviously Hunt Munitions creates slash... So this is the build. It's a pretty standard build for most things. I don't even have a primary arcane adapter on it. Um, but yeah, it creates electricity. So I'll show you that. I'll demonstrate that now. So if I start getting them up, getting them decently electri electrified, 10 stacks there, throw a Q on them. It's going to be critting a lot harder. If I throw a bunch of Qs... Eventually, you'll start seeing red crit. There goes a few brown crits as it goes up. 20 there. Throw a few more on. And then that would just amplify. If I was to reset them and then use every ability at once, I could probably get some red crits going. So I kill these off. So if I give myself Cathode Grace, give my ult, myself the ulti, put the ball down. And more, there you go. A few red crits there. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's very, 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 very good. It's um, it's a very cool system of mechanics utilizing electricity. Not many people do. It's uh, it's pretty cool, quite interesting. Now talking about Cathode Grace, this gives you critical chance when it's up, which is for me right now 129%. I will show you the build briefly uh, in a second, uh, but this is critical chance. Now, on a weapon like the Amprex, um, the, way I ha the way I have it modded, pretty standard setup here. Um, I have 96, 96 innate crit chance with this build. Add on top of that the, the crit chance that she gives me, and I'm critting a lot more often with this weapon. It's a lot. It's very cool. But what this also does is it just 
cre it just it adds on top of already disgusting crit monsters in the game like the Kuvachat Kerr. My Kuvachat Kerr is built for crit. It's two hundred and fourteen percent crit chance, which is very very disgusting uh, for a single target damage weapon. So without Catho Grace, I probably could still one shot this, but oh no, not even actually. So I'm doing brown crits. You can see that some red crits. Uh, I don't have uh, Arcane Avenger on or anything like that. You know, it's, it takes two hits or one good solid hit and a few brown crits. Now, if we add Cathode Grace to the equation on this weapon, it is truly disgusting. So if I turn Cathode Grace on, all red crits and they're pretty much dying instantly and it's beautiful. Huge damage numbers is very satisfying. Getting red crits is always satisfying in this game. So yeah, it makes weapons that have decent crit for what they are uh, very good. It makes the powerhouse crit crit powerhouse weapons in this game even better. Um, but with the Amprex, because it deals innate electricity, which in turn adds to the passive ability, which in turn adds to all of the other abilities you get a nice little wombo going on and it's very very interesting so now onto the build and why i've chosen what i have so i put five former in today it's been quite the grind and this is what i've come up with uh it's fairly basic in terms of of modding um obviously if you don't have prime continuity normal continuity works normal flow works um these are fairly common these days uh, growing power is also fairly common uh, I put a former mod on because I don't like having to keep reformering. Um, if you don't have growing power, energy siphon is another great addition because it stacks on top of cathode, which also gives you energy uh, regen, and it's just it's just very all, all round very good. Um, I obviously I have fifty percent efficiency going on here, and arcane energize is carrying it for me, so I am able to put out as much damage as possible, as much range as I can fit, and as much duration as I can fit at the cost of efficiency, which isn't a problem because I have Arcane Energize. Not everybody has Arcane Energize. It's very expensive. So if you don't have it, um, this build works here. So I've got 110% efficiency, which makes the uh, costing uh, the ability cost a lot less. However, you trade off a lot of strength for that. You only gain 65% crit chance here on Cathode Grace. Uh, your range is massive which is quite useful. I'll show you the, the range here in a sec with the uh, arc sphere. Obviously, the more range, the more people you get in your arc sphere, the more damage you do innately. However, at the cost of damage, which is is, is fair enough. Uh, duration is less as well, um, but that's what you have to pay to sort of keep the efficiency at a happy level. Um, obviously, energy siphon. If you don't have these, you, you won't need them for this build, uh, any arcanes. In the steel path, she is very tough to use in a solo solo setting. So this is the the second range bubble. As you can see, it's absolutely massive. So in a normal tile set, you know that is just going beyond the walls. So it's pretty good. But the damage is lacking a little bit. You can throw them down, throw everything down. Also, the range on this ball is pretty good too. Stack them up. And then give them a few more shots with the Amprex, which is also proccing growing power. So it all it all works together really nicely. Um, yeah, the steel path, which you're probably seeing right now, I struggled with. It was quite hard. Um, I had to go through quite a few iterations of builds just to see if I can get one that seemed to work, and that was the one that I came up with. Um, I showed you first. She is very squidgy. Um, if you start putting defensive mods on, you start trading off damage and you start trading off damage in the still path you're not killing enemies and then you're not succeeding so it's a it's a toss-up uh would you take her in a solo still path probably not unless you're a masochist um but it's a good thing it means that you can take her in as long as someone else is coming in to protect you um you know eat um the heal or mod uh there's loads there's you know wisp wisp is probably a really good frame to help um uh, Jaya survive so there's plenty of stuff to see um that's pretty much what she does i will leave you with the rest of the steel path i did I, it was only five minutes um as i said it was a real struggle to do on my own uh with her 
but it's a good it's a good thing it is a good thing um i'll leave you with that uh i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll probably see you again soon peace discovery. Keep up the good work. Extraction is available if you need it. Tenno, extraction is ready. Life support activated.